All right. Dave, take it away. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Karen. Glad to see you. <laughs> um, had a meeting with Verso on Monday, uh, my regular monthly meeting, and talked about uh, everything that's going on. And uh, a couple of things that they're still addressing is local cover art. Uh, some of you use that, some of you don't, uh, when you can upload your own cover art. And they said if it does not um, appear on there, put in a 001 line and just put a control number in it and it should appear. And, but they have the plan to have that all fixed and roll it out on the June 20th update uh, before they have the local cover art totally fixed. Some of it is done, but not all of it. But uh, Maureen said uh, yesterday when we were talking, that she said to 001 and just add a control number like a five or something. She said then it 99% um, of the time the cover art should appear for you. There was another hiccup that uh, another library had found that uh, when you went into the page of the book, when you clicked on it and you had the mark record and then the picture of the book on the left-hand side, you could actually click on that book and it would take you out to a third party like Amazon or somebody else. And uh, that wasn't supposed to happen. So they got that shut off. So that won't, won't do that anymore. If any, any of you were aware of that one. Um, most of the other issues that we've been working on, uh, they have pretty much addressed and got most of them up and going and working. But as with anything else, uh, when you fix one, it breaks something else. But uh, just uh, be sure to shoot me an email or give me a call and ask questions or tell me what you're experiencing so we can get, get the other things addressed. And um, other than that, those are, the, those are the biggest things that they've they talked about at the meeting and they added a couple of new uh, reps on that uh, CSRs or tech people like what Maureen does and met two more new ladies, uh, one's in Alabama and one's in Boston that uh, are added on to the group to, to help uh, work on tickets and stuff. But I can't think of anything else. Anybody have any questions about it or issues that they wanna just ask me about real quick? Good, no, all right. Go away, George. Well, that was quick. So I guess I, I'm seeing, I think most everybody here knows how to do that, but do you know how to add the zero, zero, 001? I think everybody does. I think I've shown most of you how to do Mark. You don't, Kathy? Okay, good, perfect. Let me share my screen. Kathy says so she doesn't. Okay. All right, so here is, oh, can everybody see that? Okay. Oh, that's not, there we go. Got to move that menu out of the way. Okay, so it's as, as simple as coming up to a little box up here. Hey, there's no 001, Dave. No, there isn't. Well. Oh, she probably meant 003, sorry. Oh, yep. Yeah. So yeah, I bet she did. this one, since it's repeating, because there's already a 003, it won't let me add one. But that's where you would come in. You would click the little box with the arrow below it. Um, double click on the 003 and hit insert. And then it would put it in. And then that's where you can just add any kind of control number. I will clarify that with her, being as we see that the way it is, I will clarify that with her. Yeah, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the 003 because that's usually where their control numbers are. So, right, right. Yeah, I think she oh. might have just misspoke because she was probably thinking cataloger instead of verso person. <laughs> yep, that's true. Okay. George, I'm looking and I have a 001, but okay. mine, um, when I click the little square to add a, a field, Mm -hmm. It just puts a little space in there, and then I type in the number. It, this little box doesn't come up. Oh, I just type in the number I want. Huh. Well, I wonder why you have different options. That's interesting. Can you just click right there, George, and just add a line without even doing what 
I probably um, could, but I don't know how. Um, And mine, a 001 number does come up on mine. Okay, it does come up on yours. Okay. Well, that's good then. Yep. You want to share your screen and show us? I don't know how to. Let me let me stop my screen share. <laughs> well, just a minute. I'll have to bring it up on this computer because I... I oh, okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Give me a second to get Verso up on... I can figure out where I am and what I'm doing. Okay, no problem. I want to yeah, because I've only ever had that little box pop up. Anybody else? How, Karen, have you, Kathy? How do you do it? That's how I do it. With the box? Uh huh. Okay. I guess Karen's just, or Nancy's just special. Looks like Kathy has that 001 in, inside when she has clicks on the box as well. Okay. That's the leader, what am I doing? Hey Mary in Waukini. One of you needs to mute your microphone because when uh, if you both have them on, you, we get the feedback. That's where we get the feedback. So one of you needs to have a microphone muted temporarily when one of you is talking. That's what causes the feedback. It's holding so. Huh, interesting. Okay, well, while Nancy's doing that, I did want to mention a couple other things here, um, or one other thing here. Um, we have noticed that when people, when somebody is combining records or merging records, they are merging large print and regular text books. Um, and I don't know if that's anybody here. It doesn't really matter. I'm not looking to blame anybody or anything like that. But um, in the future, if you're doing merging, make sure that the books that you're merging are either all large print or all regular text and not combine regular text and large print. Okay, those two should be left separate. But we appreciate everybody that's helping with merging because that has been a huge help as well. So, all right, I'll stop my share and then we'll see if Nancy can get hers rolling. And I've talked to a couple of libraries and they said they've really noticed a huge improvement in cataloging and the available, you know, stuff that's not, uh, stuff that has been merged and things aren't as cluttered as they used to be. A year or so ago. Okay, I have a comment to make about merging records. Yes. When I merge, I see that um, some of the records have all capitals in the titles, like even V in the middle of the capital. You know, Bob and V, little kitten, and every word is capitalized in the title. I'm a kamikaze. I go in and I uncapitalize all of them. <laughs> but anyway, just a comment. Okay. Um, okay. I think I don't know. Okay. Share screen. And then do I just click? Yep. Share screen. And it'll pop up a window. It says host disabled participant share screen. Oh, I did. Well, now that's going to have to be overrided. So <laughs> let me do that. I thought I had share screen on. There we go. Let's see. No boy. Let's 
See, Sharon, you're getting a really good taste of how the experts don't aren't experts. Maybe we ought to let Alicia take over, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> She's an expert. Here, I'm just going to make you a co-host so that I don't have to worry about trying to find this thing anywhere. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, so now what? you got the real power here. All right. There you go. Now you should be able to share. Okay. I can get Then I go to Ted Bitbarker. Okay, then if I, well, that's there, but if like, if I wanted to add a thing, I just click on the little button and it just, then I add the, Oh, I think you went to a. I think you went to a different window. We can't see it. Yeah, we can't see the bib record. Oh, how do I share it? Um, is it share. on another? Is it on another screen, Nancy? Yeah. Okay, drag it back over to the first screen. Let's see if that'll get it. Now I can't. Okay, where was I? Okay. Are you seeing the bib record? No. Well, you have to edit bib record to go into the to where you want to add. Yeah. Over, yeah, she Over. clicked on it. Yeah, so go ahead and step, hit uh, stop uh, share. It's the red button. And then go ahead and share screen again and click on the uh, bib record this time. Oh, okay. Well, let me bring it back up. Okay. All right. Perfect. See, we're learning all kinds of things. Yeah. Okay. Now I want to go back to you. Oops. Wherever my meeting is. Man, oh man, oh man. This is complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it great? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, whatever. There, now are you seeing it? Yeah, there now we're we seeing go. it. Yay, hey, there's the 001. Yes. But like, um, if I want to add a bib record, I just, where I want to add it, I just go to there and I don't get a little box. I just, it just makes a little hole for whatever I want. Interesting. That's what mine does too. I just tested mine and mine does the same thing as that. It just makes a blank spot wherever the cursor's at. You just add your record the way you want manually. That's well, you have to too. you have to know what number you're wanting to add. I right. kind of like the little box that comes up that you can choose a number instead of having to know the number. I'm wondering if it's because I'm not in one of our records. Well, that could I'm I'm in Bird City's record here. Okay, I'll stop sharing. Do okay. you need me anymore? No, that's perfect. Thanks that's for showing perfect. us. Yeah. Okay. So now that we've thoroughly confused everybody, do you uh, do you get that now? Kathy, can you see how that works now? Okay, good. All right. Excellent. Anybody else, Jody? Did you catch that? You probably know how to do it. I think so. Actually, Rhonda does that. She trained me one time, but she does it. So oh, okay, perfect. Excellent. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. So we've covered large print, large print, large print, regular print, merging. Mm -hmm. Talked about the 001 field. All right. So now let's open it up for all of you. What questions do you have? What areas are you struggling with? What's going on? George, I, I, I don't know if this is a question, a comment. If it's something verso, I, anyway, when I go to put a book on reserve and I add several names to it, sometimes there'll be the number order will be like three, five, six, eight, and 12. 
I try to click update sequence and it just is those numbers instead of one, two, three, four, five. Well, Alicia kind of, we were talking about it this morning before the meeting and she said, I wonder if it has to do with the merged records. So I went in and looked oh, and there's okay. a, a merged record that had, and it says it has eight holes, but we only have five at our library and it's that same thing, it's the strange numbers. I, you know, which is fine, but it makes it look like our patron is number three when they're actually number one on the whole list. Does that make any sort of odd sense? It does, it does. You, um, would you like to take and share the screen and show us again what you're, show us exactly what you're talking about? I, I, I think I understand how what I did you're that. saying. What's that? <laughs> have to remember how I did that. You'll be fine, you'll be fine. Go there okay. first and then share the screen. Anybody else seeing this? Okay. Of course, Lisa, yes, you are. <laughs> Karen, have you noticed this too? Not really, but okay. I'm not at the front very often, so I don't do the like a lot of reserves. But okay, gotcha. Very good. Valerie, I love all your plants. Thanks. <laughs> I have so many. It's like it's like your greenhouse. Right? Just, I know yeah. she has perfect windows. That's awesome. Yeah, there are just a lot of them. Okay, Nancy, look at you. Okay, this is the, the red book by James Patterson. Oh, and I see the first what you're saying. Hold is number three, and then five and six. Anyway. So we have five holds in our library, but when I look at the merged record, it says there are eight holds on the merged record. Okay. So I'm assuming those one and two and four must be other libraries. Yeah, I bet they probably are. And I bet it is because of the merged record. Hey, Dave, you want to make a note of that? Yeah, I am. What was the name of that book? Um, well, the Red Book. But oh, the as, Red Book. <laughs> by James Patterson. But as holds, holds come on and off, it'll change. Okay. So it's no. that it works right now. <laughs> okay. Very good. That's. But that's once Alicia said the merge, now that I kind of know why it probably is doing that, but it was just very disconcerting when I oh, yes. thought about that. <laughs> yeah, that's like, right. <laughs> why do our holds start at number three? <laughs> <laughs> so now you just got to ignore the number. And whoever's at the top gets it, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, I'm done. Cool, thank you. See, and now you know how to share your screen. So yes. is, so um, George, is that why uh, we sometimes on our reserve list see other libraries instead of our, just our patrons? Um, I don't know. Or could, it, could they have reserved it mistakenly instead of going on the ILL side? Um, so you're seeing patrons from other libraries? See, I'm trying to process this. Do you, would you like me to give you the screen sharing so you can share with us what you're talking about? Oh. Yeah, we could. Um, it, but before I go to that, I have it already up here. We had a question about one day we were looking on our um, CERC administration um, regarding the reserves and uh, under CERC administration and then CERC options, there's a um, a question on here that you can put yes or no, and it says automatically assign reserve to next patron in line, and we have no, and right underneath it, it says automatically notify next patron in line for reserve, and we have no, but should those be yes? Yes. 
And, and when does that happen? Does it like wait a certain number of days or, you know, certain well, amount of time and then and then notify the next person in line that the reserve is available for them? So I don't know the answer actually to either of those questions. Did you, are you seeing where, where it is? Do you yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in uh, CERC options and I'm looking for that. Um, it's a long list of stuff. I oh, just yeah. did, you just do. <laughs> it is. <laughs> if you just do a control find automatically, then it'll pop you right into it. Where those two questions are. So, I mean, maybe it's best to have them off and then we just check it manually and, and control it that way. So we, so that's correct. Or I, I just wasn't sure. <laughs> we just came across that one day and, and thought that was an interesting parameter. Let's see. I mean, I could, I'm sure you can find it. It's under CERC admin and then CERC options. I'm not sure where that needs, what that It's about three be. quarters of the way down on mm -hmm. the, or maybe halfway down on the list. Yeah, no, I, I found okay. it. I'm not sure what it needs to, what it's supposed to say. Okay. Um, it's, it's saying no right now, but I know there's been other things that we we've been having problems with, and then we go in and find out, oh, we have it, we have it set, the settings set on the wrong right. term, and that's why we were having problems. So, yeah, um, yeah. But as far as the getting other libraries, when she said that she's doing merging, and that's why some other libraries are popping up in the the reserve box, I'm not sure if that's maybe why we're seeing some things like that too? Well, she's not actually seeing the, um, the reserves. It's just changing the numbering of her own reserves because of it. Oh, okay. They're not, they're not bleeding oh, through. They're not coming through, okay. Yeah. Hey Dave, would you ask Maureen about those two settings that Mary mentioned? Uh, where was doing that again, Stark Admin and then where? And then it's, under, it's under circulation the, options. Yeah, the big long list of yes and no's and circ parameters and then circ options and then no, circulation administration and then circulation options. And then you there's a lot, there's a list of, of choices. I would think if you if you do say yes and it does it automatically, then you, you probably would have to ch click on something else to tell it how many how much time do you wait before you yes turn it over to the next person i do know that i think you have to put in a day for uh yeah a, you know, a number of days or whatever send anyway that was <laughs> mary send me an email with with what you're asking. So I have more detail about it like you have before. Send me an email on that one. And that way I can be a little more explicit uh, with Maureen about uh, investigating that. It sure be helpful. Okay. It's okay. a minor thing. It was just yeah. something we no, came across one day and we yeah. Yeah. thought yeah. it hasn't cost us any problems so far, but we right. just- No problem, no problem. But you're um, correct on some of these options. Uh, yes means no, and no means yes sometimes. And so it's oh. trying to. Just... Okay. Yeah, some of these can be quite confusing. We've had to have Maureen define them for us other times too. So okay. that's why I would go to her and, and ask her directly. The other thing was that we, we have uh, for cataloging, we had a question one day because we wanted to add in certain things like um, for um, the, let's say we have a memorial book or um, we have a, um, a book that is a William Allen White award book. 
uh, and we want to designate and say, oh, this was a this was a, a winner in 2012, or we or this was a, a runner up or um, nominated for that award, whatever. Is there a way that we can put in? Well, actually, Kathy did find a way to put in a note in the um, yep. in the cataloging, but when you pull up when when that uh, when someone's just looking for that book and they pull it up, it doesn't. You can't really see it very well. You can't really see the notes. And she had a had the idea of maybe if we could some way bold that note. Is there a way to make it? At, a bold at this time, there is no. That was one thing that I had uh, you had asked me, and I uh, okay. gone to them about that. And there is not, and there's not okay. a way at this point in time to search. There's not a searchable search for notes right. to be able to do that. And the bold, the boldest thing, because that's just not part of. Uh, cataloging and uh, the way okay. the bib records work in that part. Yeah, so yeah, where, I, I understand what you mean. Where are you putting this note, Mary? Um, how do you mean where? Oh, where is she? Where? Yeah, is where's she, where's the actual location of this note? Is it in the mark record? Is it in, in the general notes? She what puts is it five twenty. No, she says she puts it in general notes. Under the holding holding section, where the note section is, under holdings. No, no. Uh, I'll mute my I'll mute myself and let Kathy tell you. Well, I, okay, we could hear. Oh, we can't. You're muted, Kathy. There you go. Is that, is that put it in general notes. Okay. The 520, is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The 500 or 520, something like that. Okay. So there are options here. Um, so let me bring up a record here real quick. What's the name of one of the books that you have it under? George, isn't there a place that you can put award-winning books? Isn't there a field somewhere in the? Yes, there is. I and I can't, I can't think off the top of my head what it is. I always, I really had told me years ago to put it under 590. Okay. And so then when you search for all under all headings and say, you know, Ralph Smith Memorial, then it comes up. Probably came in or um, so if it's a memorial book, that's how I have like yes. it. Really, if it's anywhere in the mark record, it's going to be searchable. Right. Um, if it's in the holding, it's not necessarily going to be. Mary, you're going to have to turn your computer sound off and turn Kathy's on in order to stop that echo. Um, and so we can actually use the holding. Um, it won't be searchable, but it should highlight that it's an award winner. And there's a way of doing that. And Mark used to make fun of me because I use those fields for things that they're not supposed to be used for back a long time ago. Um, but there are places in there, it'll actually show up behind um, like the call number and stuff. And so it'll actually show that it's an award winner. And would it make it searchable then? No, you're going to have to have it in both places. I have a question. Like if Karen puts a memorial in the 590, will that show up on my local record? So my patrons will say, who is this memorial for? Okay. Now there's a way that we can, uh, and Dave has been talking with Maureen about this. There's, there's a way that you can mess with that and not have it do that um, and we'd each have to be assigned a specific uh, number and then we'd have to make that number visible for your library but not visible for other libraries um, 
And at one point we were doing that, not a number subfield, I should say, I'm sorry, subfield. So for instance, if you put it in 590, we would assign somebody 590A and we'd make it visible in their library, but then we wouldn't make it visible in everybody else's library. And then we'd assign Pioneer 590B. We'd make it visible in Pioneer, but we wouldn't make it visible in the rest of the libraries. And so there's a way of, of playing with it so that we can, we can do that. Okay. And then Thank it you. will be searchable for your library. So. Okay. Awesome. So, well, that would that would work. Yeah. And so we were going to let me know. <laughs> we were going to do this a while back, but then other things took over, and I wasn't able to get that deployed. So. No, no problem. I just didn't know if, because like when I'm merging records, if somebody has. A field like that, I try to use that record, but right. That's all the subfields are what make it awkward. Sure, sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let me just bring up a. I'll just bring up a book here real quick. Are you hearing me, Kathy? Okay, let me share my screen here. These are great questions too, by the way. Thank you for sharing them. Okay, can everybody see my record here? Okay. Um, so... Let me see if I have a 590 in my list. I should. Nope. <laughs> Figures. Oh. Well, if you can do it like uh, what was shown earlier, then you plug in your 590 field, put in your information. And like I said, that, that will make it searchable or should. Um, I need to go in. Let me make a note for myself and make sure that those um, those fields are searchable because sometimes Verso turns off certain fields um, just because they're not used very much. And so let me make sure that 590 is searchable first and foremost. Um, but if you put it in any of the uh, 500 fields, any of the note fields, you'll be able to... Uh, it'll be able to be searchable. And then whenever you put your holding information in, um, there's lots of options. Did you, did you answer the questions? Uh, well, I can't do that. Is what I got. And so, um, so Mark, uh, used to make fun of me because I would use these enumeration fields down here. Um, I would even use these chron chronology fields. I would even add uh, suffixes and prefixes to add information to the call number so that you can see that information whenever you look the book up, okay? Um, in my opinion, I think um, adding a suffix to it would probably work. Um, but you could put it pretty much anywhere. The only place that you're not going to see things is if you have it in comment, um, circulation note. Um, I don't think cost comes up. Um, but any of the enumeration, chronology, or suffix and prefix will pop up. And it will appear. Let me go back. Oh, yep. It will appear right here then. Not right there. I'm sorry. It'll appear right here. Why was I over there? So if it's a suffix, it'll be after this like F-I-C-R-O-W book. It'll be after that. So that's where you can put W-A-W um, 2012. And they'll know that that's a William Allen White 2012 award book. Okay. Okay. 
And let's see. Well, let's try planes. I don't want to mess with their record. If it was ours, I'd mess with it and show you. But so play around with those other enumeration and other options that are available there and, and see where they put that information and then use that because that really draws it out to somebody's eye. They're not going to see it in all this stuff, but they're going to be more apt to see it here. But having it in with the mark record is going to make it searchable. Okay. Does that answer your question? Kind of, yeah. Okay. And for books, the memorial books, would we do something like the same thing? Um, you could, yeah, absolutely. It's like M E M and then the name of the person. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not too much information there. No, I think that would be fine. Or you could just put the name of the person. Hmm. That might be confusing though. And then if, uh, if you then put it in a um, field in the mark record, then it makes it searchable. It's not, yeah. And I'll look into what we used to do or what, what instructions I had from before on how to do memorials and see if we can't get that implemented. Or even if that's an option now, because this was a little, little while ago. Okay. Is that totally confusing to everybody? <laughs> it's a con it's a confusing thing. <laughs> yep, yep. It can be, absolutely. Okay, what else? So you found on these stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go for a little bit. Well, I really didn't want, I didn't know that was true. But we have this text. Yeah, I see that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can find it. Nothing else. You got Dave here. He can ask questions. He's just got a big smile on his face. Well, I have a question for Dave then. Okay. Um, we've been noticing that if our screen sits idle for I don't know how many minutes, but we it freezes up. And so then we either have there. to log out and log in, or we have to open up a new tab and then come back to the screen. Yeah, you have to close the browser, reopen the browser. That's something that they are working on. Okay. That's, uh, I've been notified about that several times okay. in different libraries, yeah. And mm -hmm. that's a hiccup that they're trying to get fixed. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Dave, has anybody noticed the slowness sometimes of loading records yes. and yes. loading thing? It's yep, rather frustrating. Idea. You think you, you know, that there's only four books available, and then all of a sudden, a few minutes later, then a bunch more pop up. Yep. Yep. That's another one that they've been working on. Okay. Yeah. Dave was in my office the other day, and I was going to show him something. I went in <laughs> and I searched, and it just, just yeah. that across Round the page the, thing the whole time. And Dave's like, oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, I wish that there was a, a stop somehow where, you know, you look right. up a book and it just sits there and goes and goes and goes, and then you can't get back out. Then you have to set, shut your browser again. Yeah. yeah. I wish there was a stop button that you could say stop searching. That was, uh, that was a suggestion that was thrown out at him, yes. So that okay. may be coming in the future, but uh, they've had numerous people suggest that also. Okay. Well, does that have something to do, like when we uh, search for interlibrary loan, it has the um, additional search results and then you can add to your results. Is that, is what's slowing it down? Or, I mean, why do we have that option? Good question. I wondered the same thing. <laughs> This is Pat at Norton, and also I have a question, and if you're putting in tickets, can you tell them that we want a back button that actually takes you back to the screen that you were on instead of clear back to the home page? You're in something, and you just want to go back, and you hit back, and it takes you clear back the home page, and you have to start all over. 
that's where right instead of hitting the back button you have kind of at the top of your page um give me a second You want to uh, screen share, Dave? Yeah, I'm getting to where I want to be real fast. Okay, I will give you permission there. We've also noticed that um, sometimes when we just are uh, to even use uh, the program, it'll be, uh, it's frozen. Yeah, you know, that's part of part and of that. So we have to go to another computer and pull it up on on the other. All you computer. have to do is exit the browser and open the browser back up, and it'll take off and go. So what you're saying, Pat, um, instead of hitting this back button, you want to use this back button. If you use this one, yes, that will always take you back back. But if you stay with inside Verso and use the back here. You'll always just go back one page instead of clear back to the beginning. I think it's mainly for me, it's in when I'm into the SIL. When I'm into the ILL program. Okay, when you're in SIL. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I can't and I can't tell you exactly where I'm at every time, but it's like I know it when I do it and I'm like, ah, why don't they have a Buttons so I can get like back if you're in the re, in the request manager or if you're uh, it's when I don't know Dave I'll find it when I find it next time I'll write it down and let you know yeah like, or or give me a buzz and if I'm here I can pop over and see exactly what you're doing but yeah see, the other thing too is you have your menus here right and if you click that then it'll pop up and you can actually go back to the page that you want to instead of physically hitting this back button. You always have your menus up here on no matter where you're at in Verso as well, and it'll open up the menus and you can right. just go right back to it too. On I'll, some I'll of the find the spot I'm, where where yeah. it's always giving me a, a hiccup, and then yeah. I'll I'll let you yeah. know. Okay, it's frustrating. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. And I'll tell you, I forget about those menus at the top right. I mean, top left corner. Yeah, and this. I end up, yeah, I yeah. completely forget about those, and I kind of do the same thing Pat does. I'll then yep. hit back, and I'll be like, "Oh crap! Now I'm completely." Yep. Out. <laughs> yep. it, it, it's just so you're just so used to hitting yeah. back up here and not realizing there are options with inside the page that you're actually on. And then, yeah, then you end up going back way further than you want to up here. I'll, I'll pay a little more attention to to what I'm doing. And that's probably yeah. the issue. I'm probably just not I'm trying to go too fast, but sure. Yeah, no, I, I understand. understand. <laughs> yep, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I, I've actually had it brought up to me um, by another librarian who, a member librarian, that maybe it's time to move to something different, different software, um, or maybe we need to figure something out within our region, maybe break everybody out into separate libraries and and then connect us through interlibrary loan or anything like that. Is this Is this something of interest to any of you? I saw Nancy shaking her head no. Because I, I have I have one or two librarians that really are not happy with autographics. So well, if you change, then that was going to speed up my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I just wasn't Nancy. sure. Amen, what, Nancy. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure what the feeling was out there. You know, I didn't know if maybe I was missing something and I didn't want to do that either because. Um, I mean, I know it'll it'll increase Dave's uh, retirement as well if we did this. So, okay, then enough said. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, you know, I think there are hiccups in Agent Verso, but they are very responsive. I think. Yeah. I think I think so too. There's going to be hiccups no matter what you get. So, 
Exactly. And that's where I'm at too. You know, just because you're unhappy here doesn't mean you're going to be happy on the next one. That's right. <laughs> and it's been so hard for us switching over from our last program. Oh my gosh. We, we just finally, I think, got through that whole list, Kathy and Amanda, of the Cirque, uh, what was the name of it? Um, the, the Cirque, if they're uh, in locations, okay. yeah, the, the, the Cirque tab doesn't know where to put them. And, and so we had to go through them one by one. And, and that took uh, almost two years now <laughs> doing all that. You, you're a prime example of what it's like to move from one system to the next and the hiccups that you encountered in, like you just said, two years to get yourself terrific. back yeah. Yeah, to a workable function. Yeah. So that's another reason why I go, change? Uh, no. <laughs> you're on your own if you do it. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure because, and I, I do understand um, their perspective. I mean, yeah. you know, they want to have control of things and they want to have things working properly as they see it. And, and it's not that way. So I, I understand that. I, I really do. So, and I think uh, maybe at some point we'll probably talk to the executive committee about anybody that is unhappy enough that they want to switch that we will help them do so. But um, I just wanted to kind of get a feel. from. from then the would people. they be on their own um separate print and we wouldn't be able to search and see what's in their catalog no we'll still be able to do that at, um, okay. through the sip connection we would still be able to see what okay they have yep yeah. and do interlibrary loan and everything yeah okay yeah yeah i remember what it was like when there was at least uh would we have five five different ones george before we mm -hmm. officially went to verso and just trying to wrap your head around each one of those individual ILS systems was, yeah. And I would say Norton's is probably the oddest one out of all of them. <laughs> it was the very island. generic. It was very generic compared to all the rest of them with Highlands. And yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, any other oh. questions? I think we got a lot of good information here that Dave and I can look into. Yeah. Um, about the, you know, I, I actually just thought of something about the memorials. Um, what functionality do you, you want to have with those memorials? Do you want to be able to search them? Do you want to have them really pop out there to people? Um, what, what all do you want to be able to do with that? I want to make it so it's searchable. This is Emily at Norton. Okay. I want to make it so it's searchable because we have had families come in that like, um, I had a, you know, a memorial dropped off. I just curious what books are in there and I have to go back and I, I mean, I know where it is, but not the front desk does. So, I mean, I can look it up on my paper files and find it, Right. but it'd be nice just to search their, their last name and be able to pull it up in all headings or something like that. Yeah, we, that's what we thought too. That would be nice. If somebody says, oh yeah, what about that book that that we donated, you know, for Susan Bankelman, you know, we can't remember the title of it. Well, you know, so we would be able to pull up the books that were donated in her name and then um, we could see, you know, which which book it is that they want to check out. And make it searchable, not so much like I guess in like the all headings, the numbers and stuff, like make it searchable in like the comment section. Because if, you know, merging records and stuff like that, you could, I could put that in the 590 line, but if it gets merged, it's lost. So, but it's always going to, like, it never affects our comment section in our, when we catalog. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, no, I understand. And that, when, when I was first thinking about that, that's something that popped into my head too, so. And that way it'll always be there. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see what we can figure out on that. And Emily you're, uh, and George, just the comment section, you're talking about the comment section in your holding. Yeah, 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 thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, in the, in the holding. In that particular field, there's no way to make it searchable. They said I there's know. just absolutely no way for there. So that's where we have to 
try to figure out, like George is saying, the 590 and the rest of it, it, we've got to figure out a way with inside the record itself because there's no real way to be able to search that comment section in the holding. Okay. And, and I think once we get merging um, going and we get decent records in there, um, it should be less and less of an issue with those going away once we, right. once we, you know, because we'll be merging somebody else's record in. Uh, yeah, let me give some thought to this. I, I will think about this, Emily, and, and see what we can figure yeah, out. Yeah, because I know, like, if I see, like, especially in schools, like the junior fiction and stuff like that, they put in, like, they put in a lot of extra stuff, like the you know, like the reading level and stuff like that. And if you were to merge with one that didn't have it, it would completely wipe out all their hard work. Yeah. And so like that's, and, and then if you have other people that have 590 lines in there for Memorial. So I'm saying I'm searching for John Smith. There might be another John Smith at another library, but because we all share that record, it'll be still attached. So I might pull up 12 other books that aren't actually for that John Smith. Right. George, I've only ran into a couple times where there has been a record that I was, you know, uh, using that had some kind of information, the 590, and I just took it out. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Does that take it out of their record then? If it's uh, one of our records in Norwest, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And, 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 and you're doing the, uh, the update upload thing? Yeah, that's getting rid of that. It's getting rid of that. So I've only done that once, I think. I don't remember who it was, but um, I guess most of our pages don't pay any attention to that. If they, if they don't really look at the mark record that close. So yeah. if they see that it was a memorial for John Smith. So, yeah, no. Let me, uh, let me give some thought to this. And see, then that lends to the, to the thinking that maybe we need to start writing some, some sort of policy for all this, just so that we know or direction or specific or dire yeah or direction some kind, and direction some kind of it, yep. speci yeah specific directions for everybody mm -hmm. for all the libraries otherwise this is never going to work yeah the, no you're the, you're, the merging you're, record you're, in theory is never going to work yep yep nope you're absolutely right and so we need a little more formalized uh, i think meeting where we actually discuss a lot of this and and determine as a group how we're going to move forward with some of these things. So, sounds yep. good. Sounds good. Okay. See, Valerie, there, there you go. Now you got some stuff that you can work on here. Yay. <laughs> um, this might, this is kind of out of the blue, but I, I can't remember because um, of the last uh, daddy program that we had. Can a patron reset their own password yes. from their home? And then we don't have access to their account. Is that right? Well, you you we always won't. have access to their account because of check-in and you because you're the you're the edit user, you know, delete user account, but the password is only for them logging into their account, personal account. And they just log in, they just pull up your uh, website, log into the card catalog. And if they've never set the password, it'll ask them to create the password. And then they can always go in and edit their password and change it anytime. Then that way, if they forget it, then you can go in and reset it when you do it at a patron of your user admin. Okay. Because yeah. the last one we had, they could not, we had to always reset it on our end and tell them what it was. Yeah. 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 You can do, yeah. I'll verify for sure, but I'm positive the patrons can reset their own password. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. You can. Yeah. The, uh, the password's actually defaulted to user pass. Right. And they're supposed to initially use that to log in and then they go in and change their password. Yeah. It'll prompt you to, change your password but if you forget your password then you can just go in use your pass and then they can just go in and reset it again themselves i know but you have to do that you would have to yeah if they, they don't have password they can't if they forgot it then you have to there i mean that's what we've done in the past but yeah. i thought well maybe yeah. 
that's changed that they can you know, do it themselves. You can put the option down where they log in, where it says forgot password. And then if they click yeah. on that, then it shoots exactly. them an email and then yep. they can uh, reset their password at that time. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. right here. See my screen? Uh-huh. Right there, for, forgot your password. You click on yep. that. And that's an option to have available for patrons it's i don't think that's default is it george i think you have to put a check mark in a box is that correct alicia i don't, would, I I don't know that one i'm not sure okay. alicia's shaking her head yes so i'll believe her i was i was thinking that was correct it's just default that would be nice i don't know I, I but if some patrons there's a, still a few patrons that we have that that will not give us an email so they couldn't they couldn't use that but then that's for the most part people would be able to do it if we were able to give them that option i don't remember where that's at yeah I, I, i'm not sure either i was just kind of taking a look here to see if i could see it I was assuming it was under circ, uh, circ admin, circ options, but I, I don't know for sure. It was, I think I saw it down there. It's like patron password. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I thought I saw it. I saw a password, I swear. <laughs> oh, here's uh default expiration date warning. Patron password must be numeric. That's on no. Uh, patron registration hard block override password. Um, but I don't see enable warning signals or no, nope, that's just checkouts. Well, I'm not seeing it now either. We'll have to locate that then. Yep, we'll locate that. Curious question for everybody. George and I have been talking about something. If you had the option to do a self checkout, would you do it in your library? Let your patrons check their own books out? Yes. One yes. <laughs> yes. It's an expensive machine. Yes, it is. I've looked into it. Karen, your yes, just it's because be you said yes us. twice, doesn't mean that that's two yeses. Did, I, said, did, yes. I, do it, did I do it twice? Yeah, so that, that oh. only counts as one. So I there's it. really just one, me. Well, I'll defer reason... that one to Alicia for Pioneer. She's the one that's out at the front desk all the time. The reason Dave's asking is because um, we it, it's kind of come up that this is becoming more and more popular in libraries. And so I was going to see if there was something that we could do to find some funds to help pay for or pay for a self-check machine for folks. And so I think we're going to be asking to see if there's anybody that would be interested if they would have to pay a little bit or wouldn't have to pay at all. Who would want one? Well, my thinking is we are getting more and more and more young uh, families, and um, I, I think they would really appreciate the fact that they could just check it out themselves. Now, some of our older patrons probably not, no. but um, you know, when they have a stack of books for their you know kids, and they're having to wait in line 
you know, to get them checked out, I think they would appreciate that. So I would be willing to try it. Sure. Okay. We don't have the volume of people and of people that are, are tech savvy that way that it would make sense for us. They really, and, and anybody that comes in here, really, they, they almost want the social interaction. You know, it's kind of a reason they come in a lot, a lot of times. So just, um, but I, I can see a bigger library. Yeah, if, if there are lines, we, we hardly ever have a line. It's kind of like going to Walmart. You either go through the line with the person or you go to the self-checkout and you're getting less and less of the person and you're getting more and more of the self-checkout. Yeah, I was in Walmart yesterday and there was one line open for checking people out and the rest were all in self-checkout and it was there was a line to get into self-checkout. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I did find that. It's under um, UX admin. Uh, oh, okay. And it's oh, under it UX there. admin settings. And then there's a login right here. And then you click on login form options and then display forgot password link. See Valerie, you knew you'd seen it somewhere. Can you, can you repeat that George you user bet, admin? So I'll close out completely. Okay, oh, so we're going to go to UX admin. Oh, UX admin. Okay. Yep. Settings. Click okay. on that. And then that's going to pop out a, a window on the side. And okay. then click login. And then uh, login form options. Okay. And it's that first checkbox on the right, display forgot password link. Okay, so it needs to be checked? Yes. Okay, ours, ours is checked, so. Okay. Good job, Alicia. Yeah. The forgot password link should be there then. So just say save. We're gonna make Alicia one of our other experts on Verso. No, 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 no. Yep, and then once it's uh, check marked, you just hit save and you're good to go. Okay. What is the display library lookup box? That's the drop down menu to where you could go sign into another library, which you don't, if you know on Norwest Passage, you choose any one of the libraries, but uh, I mean, and on our catalog, okay. yours, you don't want. No, to be okay, I just to wanted to make sure that was. Yeah, yeah let, me, let me show you what that looks like here. Yeah. So when I hit login, I get this box here where I can select, share it. select any of your libraries. Okay. Did you see that? Sorry, that was quick. Okay. So should we should we click with the box that says show password prompt? What does, what does that help them with? I'm not even sure what that would do unless uh, I'm not sure because I know in some places if you uh, whenever you put in your information for an account you can put in a prompt to remind you of what your password is oh okay that's, um, and that's so if they point. haven't entered something to prompt them to remember then right. I don't think it'll show anything right so that would probably set up a thing if you click that, that when they set up their password, it would ask them questions. Yeah, I think it'll, it'll remind them. Yeah. Like, you know, some people have four or five different passwords they use. So they might've put like, you know, the one that I use a lot or same one as Google, you know, and then that way when they click on that, it'll pop up that and say same one as Google. And then they'll be like, oh yeah, okay. Okay. So when it, if a person does not have an email account in their account, they will not be able to reset their password by themselves. They'll have to call because I just did it for myself. And like in Joaquini and I did my tech support and 
I put my, it asked my username, I put it in and it immediately sent me an email to my account and it gives me a, a box to hit reset password. So if they do not have an email in their account, it won't work wow. unless they call you. Okay. And again, I think this is gonna be what you were saying earlier about the self check. You're gonna have some patrons that are gonna to wanna to do this kind of stuff. You're gonna have some that aren't. And so yeah. it's gonna yeah. fall in between those two areas, so. Right. Yeah. Uh, Dave, I did notice that when I tried to reset mine, um, I have um, a text message to come to my phone, but I can't reset the password from there. Okay. And that will be an option that's chosen within um, each user account on your default settings then probably. Right, because if I had an email address in there, then I could, I mean, I have one for, a, you know, an SMS. So when I link, when I got that link, it will not let me change yeah. it from there. So it would have yep. to be an email. Have to be an not email. Not a text. Yeah, not a text. Good point. Good point. <laughs> Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Um, does the is this a, a new thing now with um, or would you, is it that we just never noticed it on the interlibrary loan when uh, when we accept a book? I guess on receipt, um, is there? I guess is there an extra box or something there that says, "Hey, do you want to notify the patron at this time?" And then if they do have an email, it set, shoots them an email. I mean, and, and is that automatic or is that, it seems like it's only if you check that box. I, I don't know anything about that. We've just been seeing that. that recently and we thought, oh, that's, that's, that's maybe a great uh, extra notification way that we can use that, start using that as well as we always call people, but sometimes we run up against, they've gotten a new phone or, you know, they have that a might be in, message box thing. That might be in um, ILL settings where you can add that. I, I'm not sure, I don't know, Dave. Um, I know like, um, like next door, if I put a book on reserve or if I have an ILL book in the way I have my account set up, I instantly get notified. Yeah. And it's like, Judy can check in a book next door and I have a hold on that book. And the minute she checks it in, I get a text message telling me that book's available. So, so the I patron has to set that or that's we... that's partially in their account and part of their settings in the account for each oh. individual. It's not just for the whole uh, collection the... of uh, users. It's per individual how you want things set up. Huh. Our, ours is set up on interlibrary loan. So as soon as I click it as received, it sends the email. And I don't know how. Yeah. I mean, I thought yeah, that was just default. Yeah. That's the way ours So I have to be yep. careful. I'm, it's changed because originally it didn't do that. That's and what now I thought. I have to, I had to redo the way I did interlibrary loans so that I had it ready for the patron before I clicked receive because we had one patron that just lives a couple blocks from the library <laughs> and he would get that email and walk over and be here before I had the book ready for him. Yeah. yeah. I've done that to Judy next door a couple of times. She goes, what, 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 what? I said, I just got a text message and she's just shaking her head. <laughs> yeah, so I wonder where that is. To... If you can like find where the- be, Like I said, that may be a new setting change in ILL itself, we may have to look, but uh, because you see there on the screen, the uh, notification preferences, SMS reserves, SMS, and that's text messaging for uh, those notifications, but it sticks in my mind there's something in, um, in ILL as well, besides what George has check marked on his there. Okay, we didn't know if, if we had, had changed something in the settings over there, 
Or I, if they had, if this was like an update that they were uh, doing. That's a good question. I made a note to find out about that one. Because it was like that, that could be very helpful to us to just have that happen. But like she said, if it's, if it's, if you don't have time, they've already got the message, then you're, you don't have the book right, ready yet. Right. That's, that's yeah. could be, well, I don't know. Um, the next the next time it comes up i guess we could send you a, a screenshot of it yeah, that'd be good but, but we just started noticing yeah this this little pop-up box that says, do you want to notify them? And we, if we check that box, and also because I've started getting um, emails uh, in my box that says, you have a book on reserve. And what it's doing is it's it's giving, giving me a CC copy of the email um, of every reserve that, that gets filled. So I don't know how, if that's, that's also from an update or if, if we've reset something somehow. Under, under ILL admin uh, menu and then participant record. And then you scroll down about three fourths the way down through all of the settings in there. There's a spot that says um, patron notification setup. And okay, that's on the screen. And so that's yeah, there you go, George, right there. There's there's where it's at. Okay, you said ILL participant patron, record. Participant record. Let me and see. And then scroll down like what George has on the screen. Scroll down until you see patron notification setup. Okay. Um and like ours are all set to none because we really don't need to use it, but you have different categories there that you can set them up on how you want them to be notified. So email notice set up, I don't have anything in the boxes there. Do they all say none? Um, no, it doesn't say none in there. Um, let me see where you're at too. Um, patron notification set up. Okay, I guess I'm not on the right. Okay, here, under patron notification setup, um, I have ILL status email text. Okay, so yeah, there, here's the thing that says email text, and yeah, it says none. They all say none in those boxes. Okay, well, that's odd that they're get, you get notification then. So no, ours all say how... none too, but they get an email when, as soon as I receive yeah. it. Huh. I yeah. will find out. I will find out about that. I wonder if it goes back to the page. Oh, because this is SIL and it's attached to the patron. So if that individual patron has set up like what George was showing under his for text messages or email, yeah, I think it's going back to the patron, the individual patron huh. then. I'll bet you that's, I bet it's doing the individual patron. But we've gotten a lot of, I, I, I'm surprised that, that we have that many patrons that are, are super tech savvy to, to set that up. Cause I, I just um, keep getting more and more all the time. 
And it could initially just been set up when the patron was set in or been set default when you were migrated in, it could automatically have been defaulted in the check marks in the box to notify by email. It could ours have has always been that, that way. On all of them. Right, right. Okay. Dave, ours has always been that way since we've been on sale that automatically when you push okay. receive, the patron got a message if there was availability of an email or a text message. Okay. All right. That's good to know. But I noticed when that when the uh, after we had that update for ILL, um, our um, when we request a book for somebody, it automatically drops in their if they have a an email it it automatically drops in their email now it yep. didn't used to we used to have to put in a contact way and we would always put in the phone number. Okay. So we. So a lot of times now we'll erase the email and put the phone number in. Um, maybe that's why, because sometimes we forget to change that over. If we're trying to do it fast, we forget to put that that's phone good. number in as the contact. And maybe that's where it's, it's bringing that email in. That could be, I will, I will, I've got a notes on this and I'm going to ask about that. Yeah, because that's a good okay. valid point. All right. Well, it's almost 1130. So thank you. I think we'll, we'll call it unless somebody has something else pressing. Thanks, George. Yeah, hopefully this was helpful. And Well, it's always helpful just to talk things out with other people that are using the same thing. Yeah, I think so too. Hey, George, is this recorded? It is. I went, and then when will it be available for like Emily to go back and hear the first part of it?